normal peppy self because this really is a somber subject and so I wrote all my thoughts on the paper and I'm going to tell you about these all right have you ever just sat down and asked yourself what on earth am I doing here I'm sure everybody has at one point six years ago I was faced with two back-to-back -back blows the instant realization that I was in fact not in charge of my own life consumed me all the time who keeps tugging me who keeps pulling me into a total 180? Inquiring minds want to know and they need to know. Well, the experimental psychologist, with an emphasis on the evolution, I said it, of communication, was soon dunked, fully clothed, mind you, in a pool of water outside of community of faith. My life had changed. Six years ago. No longer of sound and rigid scientific mind. I handed everything over to God. The painful pushing and st pulling stopped. Sure, I'll always be a scientist with those magic letters behind my name, PhD. So as appropriately referred to as piled higher and deeper. <laughs> well, guess what? Guess what? That uncontrollable 180 I was pulled into forced me to think at a much deeper level and look higher for the power that guided me. What a joy to discover that somebody else other than me was in control of my life. <laughs> Amen. So six years ago, unbeknownst to me, God was planning my future. Clearly, my future did not include more biological offspring. I'm guessing he knew my level of sanity and patience could not bear one more. And I'll tell you a secret. We started this, but yeah, we started this, this, this charity, and we gave our first flu shots to a, a child. That was a joy to me to see that... <laughs> <laughs> so I continued my jewelry business with passion and success. I earned all the trips. I had a lot of fun. I became involved with Bible study fellowship. I remember my very first question to my leader at the time. Who wrote the Bible? <laughs> Never before opening the Bible, I was in for the ride of my life, and so were all my leaders. <laughs> Bailey, now nine years old, was bringing more and more work home from school. I was forced to decrease my business load to focus on her. So let's fast forward to December of 2013. We love Christmas. My part-time business was just that part-time. Bailey seemed to be getting more emotional, maybe hormonal at nine. I don't know. My husband, Kent, was still my husband, which is good because I'm hard to live with. No. But no, really. But facing 2014 with a busy child left me wondering if I should stop my business and totally focus on her completely. But the fabulous part of Slapata Jewelry, as Ava can contest to, is the lifetime guarantee. What's going to happen to my customers if I quit? <laughs> so I cannot and I will not leave them hanging. So I questioned this time to God as I prayed. What the hell am I doing on earth here? What, 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 what am I supposed to be doing? 
Well, I pondered that for about two weeks. And, of course, I go to my Facebook page, and there's old Holly Munsinger popping up. If you all knew Holly Munsinger, she was always on Facebook writing some great things. You know, she had this, she loved everybody, and she would make everybody feel good. So her Facebook page on December 31st said the following. Tomorrow is a new day, new beginnings, new starts, old endings, a day to remember, a day to live for. Life has its course, and every course is a new chapter. Happy New Year 2014. These words ring in my head all the time, reminding me about how every day is the most important day of your life because it could be your last. Right, Ronnie? Amen. Amen, brother. On January 5th, Holly went to the, the doctor complaining of flu-like symptoms. It was too late for Tamiflu, so she was admitted to the hospital later that day for IV treatment. By the evening of the 6th, Holly was put into a medically induced coma and placed on a ventilator. Six other families were on that hospital floor watching their loved ones fighting the flu for their lives in medically induced comas with the help of ventilators to help them breathe. First, Holly's lungs were failing and then her major organs. I followed the brothers' blogs. Holly passed away at 6 in the evening on Friday, January 17th, never waking up to see her family again. Holly's viewing that next Monday was a full house, to say the least. That was a Friday that she died. I spent a few seconds with her husband, Brent. He said one thing to me, and I'll never forget it. Just get your flu shot. Holly didn't have a flu shot. I'll never forget the tone in his voice. The following Wednesday was a day of epiphany for me. I get to use that word now because I believe in God. <laughs> I attended my B&I meeting as usual and headed to Bible study. Upon seeing my cheerful leader, she asked, how are things going? I took one look at her. I got to leave. I don't know why. I got in my car. I went home and I furiously started writing on my Facebook page. I was pissed off that my friend died of the flu. The effing flu. It's a virus. That's supposed to kill you. Of all the other things that kill you, that killed her. So I'd like to thank all my friends, Dana Ashwari and Alec T. Fertiller. Some of you might know him and her. For the written exchanges we had that morning on Facebook, Dana said, Holly's such a pretty name. You could start a cause with that name. And my friend Alex said, go for it, Becker, go. <laughs> so I had a 12 o'clock appointment at Chick-fil-A on 2920 where Holly had her start as a marketing director. 20% of the proceeds that day, the 22nd, were for the family. So it was appropriate to meet up with the gang that knew and loved Holly. We had a reunion, lots of people. It was packed. But on my somber 30-minute ride home, crying my eyes out, a ton of bricks hit me in the chest. I felt nauseated. Is that the right word, mommy? Okay. And suddenly the word, shots for Holly, appeared across the pavement in front of me as I was driving. Now what? I raced home and I got on Facebook and I said, I think a cause is brewing. Oh my God, shots for Holly. That's the name of it. My number one goal was to take all my friends in a bus to a pharmacy and get flu shots. I'd even pay for them if they wanted me to. They loved the idea. Evie Dross offered a free website, and Darlene Hyduke offered pens at cost with our name on them. I had no idea what I was doing. But remember, I gave up all control to God, right? So I think I was starting a charity. So here's the educational part. When you want to start a charity, the first thing you do is ask your friends, what do you think? Well, everybody loved it. The idea, I thought it was a good idea, but what do others think? Well, I quickly learned that there's a lot of negativity in this charity realm also. This actually happened to me. I received a private message from a Facebook friend saying, give me a call when you get a chance. I knew that calling this guy was not going to be a good thing. This person actually said the following. You have a kind heart, Michelle, and I know you've been so emotional following your friend's death. Because I talked about it all the time at B&I. You would give the shirt off your back if someone needed it. But I'm afraid your cause will have negative feedback when someone gets a flu shot and dies. Oh, That's the worst negative feedback I got. And, of course, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> so the step two is you want to do a market analysis. Is there a need for a charity? Is somebody else doing it? Can I piggyback off somebody, you know, steal their ideas, whatever? Did a quick look. There's nothing in this area for flu shot awareness. Went to the CDC and was blown away by the number of deaths of, caused by flu-related complications. So yes, there was a need for people to get vaccinated. 
And I'd already asked a lot of my friends that made a lot of excuses. Unbelievable. So what do you do next? So you want, you have a, you want a charity, you have a need, people need to get vaccinated, so you go to a wine bar. Well, let me, I don't want to get ahead of myself. That's a very important shot, right? Yeah. You find a minimum of four people that, that like what you're talking about and they nod their heads a lot and you suck them into the board. <laughs> this becomes your board. I had plans on that Wednesday evening. We're still on the 22nd, okay? Hey, no, it was the spirits. So on the tw- we're still on the 22nd, remember? Okay. We had plans to attend a swanky wine dinner at Dario's in Cyprus. My bestest friends would be there, and I couldn't wait to get there and tell them, we're all going to go get flu shots tomorrow. <laughs> but what happened was amazing. We drank a lot of wine and began to build the board of directors of Shots for Holly. Half toasted, I went outside called David Harvey, our corporate lawyer from B&I, and I told him, we want to start a 501c3. I don't know what that meant. It just so happened that David mentioned helping people start charities earlier that day in B&I. Aww. I can't even imagine what he was thinking. She's full of crap. But anyway, we talked about it. We had a good conversation the next day when I was sober. <laughs> <laughs> so step four, if you want to start a charity, it's very important that you hire a lawyer. This step is not totally necessary, but for me it was. These lawyers know the language required to get your charity up and running quickly. The IRS gives step-by-step instructions for starting a charity. If you speak IRS, you could probably do it yourself. (laughs) If you don't speak that language or you get immediate convulsions when you think about going to the website, (laughs) hire a lawyer. Hire a lawyer. The new board met with David Harvey over dinner on Friday, two days later. Our secretary treasurer took notes as David spelled out the process. I had no idea what he was saying, but our fearless president, Bernadette, knew exactly what was happening. Bernadette and I met with David Harvey on Wednesday the 29th, and I signed the professional fee and representation agreement. And I paid him money when he told me how much it was. (laughs) But it really wasn't that bad. We knew we had to have money to start a charity because how are you going to conduct your mission without money? you got to have money. This was our first purchase. These rubber band cause bracelets. You need a bracelet. I forgot to bring them for you. Oh, son of a gun. I'll get you next time. So step five to build a charity. you got to hold a fundraiser to pay yourself back for the lawyer and the IRS fees. So what did I do? I said, I know I'm going to sell all my Sapata jewelry to pay myself back for the lawyer. But soon after Holly died, I wanted to sell it all and give the money to Brent and Holly's girls. But my mom, thank God she was there, said, you better think about that. They'd already made a lot of money on the GoFundMe page. They were taken care of. Everything was fine. We had to pay for the lawyer. <laughs> the following Wednesday, so we are on January 29th, or yeah, still on the 29th, I held a 50% off sale of all my Sopata jewelry. It was a packed house at Wine Styles, of course. Got them all drunk and they bought all the jewelry. <laughs> By the end of the night, we walked away with $6,000. Wow. 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 My hostesses aren't real happy with me then right after that because I didn't have anything to show hardly. <laughs> so up to this point, it's easy to start a charity. Ask your friends, do a market analysis. Find four friends, get them drunk, the participate as board members, <laughs> hire a lawyer, and hold a fundraiser to pay the lawyer. Now here's the hard part. This is, this is the part that I didn't, I didn't like and I didn't know about. That's why we have a lawyer. Through the Secretary of State, you must obtain a certificate of filing of your new corporation or your entity. In this case, it is shots for Holly, Inc. We're an Inc. We became a Texas nonprofit corporation on January 31st. Did you know that our Secretary of State, Nandita Berry, is Michael Berry's wife? No. Your Secretary of State, mm hmm. She's probably conservative too. To complete this paperwork, an organization must have a mission statement. Got to have your mission statement like you all here do, your nonprofit. An organization must have board member names, positions, as well as their home addresses. It also has a whole bunch of lawyers speak in it, just to hire a lawyer. Step seven, you get your EIN number. Who knows what an EIN number is? Right, right, exactly. You get that online instantaneously. You can go right now and get one if you want one. Every business has a unique number that serves like a social security number. 
Did you know that as a sole proprietor, you could have an EIN? I have an EIN number for my Slapata business. So that my tax person on the IRS form, Slapata, they, they don't know my Social Security number. Step eight, write your bylaws. Or have your lawyer write them because they know how to write them. Your bylaws protect you and spell out exactly how you're going to conduct your business. How are the board of directors voted or reinstated? What happens when a director leaves? What happens when you want to fire one of those people? Where do we meet? When do we meet? How do we meet? Can we drink? <laughs> Where do we deposit money? How do we do minutes? <laughs> I do. Step nine. Have an organizational meeting of the board of directors. I, this part is the worst, but this, this is the fun part. We had margaritas in honor of, of Holly. We have great pictures. Of, I don't have them in there, though. There are some in here. Uh, this is your official board meeting, your first official board meeting. Ours was February 25th, so now we're a month later. We had to write all the papers. This is where you vote on the bylaws, the bank, the organizational costs, the officers, the accountability plan. How are you going to get paid back when you buy your rubber bands? These minutes are signed by the board of members. So now you got to do the IRS application. It really sucks because a lot of the words, I'm going to give you an example. It's a language for which I am not familiar. Who's written an IRS application to, for a nonprofit? Who wants to? <laughs> Can I leave? No, okay, here's what question number one. Full name of organization. Exactly as it appears in your organizing document. What the hell is an organizing document? I asked. I had to look it up and figure it all out. It's the certificate of formation that you did for Nandita Berry. Okay, so why not just put that, your certificate of formation? <laughs> Question number three, mailing address. Okay, I pondered that mailing address because it said number and street, which is fine, and then it said C instructions. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the instructions, and it said the thing, your street, your people that, if they don't know what a mailing address is, they shouldn't be starting a nonprofit. <laughs> I'd be afraid of where that money's going, guys. Section number 11, here's a good one. Have your annual gross receipts averaged or are they expected to average not more than $10,000? First of all, why use a negative not more than? Why not just say, are they expected to average more than $10,000? Throughout this whole application, just double negatives, negative, negative, triple negatives. Just, I had to read them over and over. I got a PhD. I couldn't get it. Not an IRS. <laughs> oh, no, right. Yeah, that's right. I don't have it in IRS. So if our gross receipts were under 10000 a year for four years, <laughs> number one, we would have only to pay the IRS a $400 application fee, which is called a user fee. I don't want to use the IRS. I, I don't. <laughs> and number two, that's just enough for maybe 500 flu shots in a year to raise $10,000. We're counting on a whole lot more. So we had to pay the $850. We're not even a charity yet, and I just sold all my jewelry, and I got to take $850 and give to the IRS. Did I ever get paid for that? <laughs> I don't think you did. I didn't get reimbursed for that. We better check it out. <laughs> You'll be asked to project. You have to project three to four years of, exp of expenses. Okay? Sounds more appropriate for an organization that's already been around. So I called Donna and Dean, Misfit Design, and I said, how much for this? How much for this? How much for this? How much? And Dean's going crazy. Why do you want to know all this? i got to fill out what I think I'm going to spend. We were pretty close, though. We totally guessed. We weren't too far, except we projected zero expenses for transportation for the first year. You know where this is going, guys. <laughs> Oops. We raised enough money to get our boss in the first year. Wow. That's restored. We were paid to have it restored. Painted it. We have it for events, and we drive people to pharmacies already. Kidnap them. Wow. I kidnap. Oh, yeah, we do. We do a lot of kidnapping, too. So thank God we hired that lawyer to bail me out of jail to, to lie. The IRS. Yeah. I project we're going to raise this much money. We only, get, we only guess we're going to raise, like, I don't know, 15000 all right, so on the checklist, the user fee placed, oh, this is horrible. Let me make sure I have enough time. You got 10 minutes. Do I? You got plenty of time. Oh, yeah, I sure do. Okay, so on the checklist, you got a checklist with this application. The user fee, the application fee, payment placed in envelope on top of checklist. 
Do not staple or otherwise attach your check or money order to your application. Instead, just place it in the, app, in the envelope. We did just that, and I received a letter days later stating that our user fee was not with the application. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is that it's still in the bottom of the envelope, so we had to pay the stop check fee. You know what? It was, you did, it was through the Shots for Holly bank account. So we had, to, we had to pay money. We're a charity. We're not even approved yet. Okay, so I was bad. That was silly. All right, so steps one through five, get started, talk to your friends, check for a need, form a board, hire a lawyer, and hold a fundraiser. Step six through ten are more difficult because it's all IRS, and if you have no desire to start with, I'm not going to go through this again. One step, though, is left out of this. I guess we'll call it step 11, but not in that particular order. It all depends on what the charity is about. In our case, we used Holly's name in our organization's name. It's no longer about Holly, per se, right now. Back then it was. It's about saving lives as a result of Holly's life being taken so soon. She was 41 years old. I asked Brent, Holly's husband, on February 10th. I happened to be there to talk to his daughter, Haley. And I had to do it. He was rummaging through Holly's stuff. And look, he's like, what is all this? He said, Michelle, do you want to buy our, our bounce house business? And I said, no, I don't want to buy your bounce house business. <laughs> But I said, I said to him, can we pursue this cause? Is it okay that we do this with you? This is the husband. You got to ask. I asked the girls days before. But asking Brent was more difficult. So I said, if you're not comfortable with this, I could change the name. He asked if we already started. I said, yes. And he looked at me and his famous Brent. Who knew Brent Munsinger? Anybody? Okay. So you can relate. In his famous Brent country mumble, he said, I don't care. I said, yes! <laughs> I ran out the door and I said, we got a charity. It's all official. <laughs> okay. So we kept moving forward. We hired the famous Dave Bamberg. Where'd you go? Oh. <laughs> to work out a logo for our organization. The logo came easily. Holly Munsinger cared most about peace among her friends, love for everybody that knew her, and freedom for all to pursue their dreams. What a more fitting tribute to have a logo that encompassed all of Holly's passion for people. As a baby of 1971, too young to participate in the hippie generation, we wanted a logo to emulate Holly as a hippie. Thus, the old Volkswagen bus, Holly was created. This bus stands for Holly as our fun-loving and free-spirited friend. We knew someday we would own that bus and take her everywhere we go to help people, knowing that Holly would always be with us. Our, IR, IR, the, our IRS application was in the mail by March 26th. It took a month to fill that out. It was horrible. Then we waited and waited. If you're anything like me, you don't sit around and wait. We assumed we would be approved, so we went after the money. Thanks to the board of directors, we moved forward. We collected items for garage sale. We earned $1,500. With six weeks notice on June 20th, we held our first annual Holly on the Range turkey shoot. Get it? Shots for Holly shoot. At the gun range, we raised $9,500. Friends surprised us with checks. Went to many expos. I called the IRS. It was going to be December at the earliest that we would hear about our approval. Flu season starts on October 1st. Holly had her birthday on July 28th. That was a Monday. I'll never forget it. The Facebook posts on her page were somber with friends wishing her a happy birthday in heaven. People posted cakes, candles, balloons, old pictures, and sentimental sayings, things that she used to say. It was a difficult day. I checked the mailbox, pulled out the mail, saw one letter with a long name on the return address that read, Internal Revenue Service. I dropped all the mail in a puddle, <laughs> opened it, And the first thing I saw was a huge date, stamped, crooked, that read July 22nd, 2014. It was our approval letter to be a tax-exempt 501c3 charity organization. Happy birthday to Holly's cause. I still get goosebumps when I talk about that. So definitely a God thing, y'all. It's a scary God thing, you know what I mean? It's like, how does he know? With this big news, <laughs> with this big news, we can go after big money for big things like our mascot bus. The VW on paper was going to come alive. Can you imagine that? God. As a side note, soon after we built our board, 
I saw more of my besties at a wine bar. There's another God thing. As I was telling Jimmy, Jimmy, my friend, it's a different wine bar, about our new charity and the bus we were going to eventually buy, he started spewing out engine terms. Type one, type two, all this, pancakes, uprights, no, no fan. I didn't understand all that. Bay window, split window. Like, what are you talking about? I asked him, what on earth? He looked at me and he said, VW engines are the only engine I will touch. Early 70s. We just found our VP of mechanical operations. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Over wine. So Bailey and I had planned a trip to Omaha to see Grandpa before the school year started. This is the August of 2014. One day before leaving, I opened Samba.com. It's a VW for sale site. And the first listing was the 1974 Volkswagen bus for $6,000. We raised $9,500 at that Holly on the range in the garage sale, and we paid our bills. So we had some money. The bus was located in Wichita, Kansas, a five hour drive from Omaha. I went. Went to Omaha, dropped off Bailey, got in my dad's truck, and I went to see this bus. I'd never seen a bus in my life. <laughs> I had no idea what I was looking at, and I had to talk to Jimmy all the time to find out what I had to look for. <laughs> so, it was in great shape. I learned so much, I went back to Omaha and showed my dad and his friends, and they all thought it looked good. The cost to transport it back to Houston was $1,000. It was going to be high. The cost to get it in driving condition would be high. Because it, it, it drove, but it wasn't very good. The day before we left to go back to Houston, I looked at Samba.com again. And the first listing was for a 1973 Bay Window Volkswagen bus for $8,000. I thought, okay, $6,000 plus all the money to get it going is going to be about ten just to get it moving. 8,000 sounds a little bit better, and it looked like it was in better condition. Five minutes. And it was in. Okay, it was in Clear Lake. Wow. I went to Wichita to look at a bus, but we have one right here in Clear Lake. <laughs> Tell me that's not a God thing, right? He was saying, don't buy that one in Wichita. Come down, come to Houston, go back. So that Sunday, seven of us, including Jimmy, went to Clear Lake to see the bus. Jimmy approved, we offered 7,400, and Mom and I went and picked it up on a Tuesday, the next Tuesday. After Labor Day. We had the bus for four days before we would give her to Collision Fix Auto to be restored and painted in purple, of course, because purple was Holly's favorite color. The job was $4,500 and it was Denise's favorite project. Other places wanted well over 10000 to do the job in three months. Denise promised to have it done in 24 days. Just in time for our Chamber of Commerce ribbon cutting. That was on September 25th. Wow. Several of us visited the bus a couple times a week to watch the progress. It was quite surreal to see our logo come to life. Each step of the way, Denise and I would hug each other in celebration. She cried a hell of a lot more than I did. She didn't even know Holly. <laughs> but she was so proud of the job that they did. So that's, they were our, our choice. Holly, our mascot bus, was alive and well. Glittering from the sun rays shining through the sky. I know Holly Munsinger was smiling down on us. It was amazing to just stand there and stare at her. We did just that along with the entire crew of Collision Fix that helped on the project of the bus. They didn't make a profit on that at all. And there's still a lot of work to do with it. But now that we had the bus, we can start doing the, uh, you know what, you can put it on the Facebook page. There's lots of pictures there. Okay. Um... There's still a lot of work to do. We started the Mascot Pals program. And if you look at the bus outside, there's a lot of uh, logos on it, and people pay for those. Uh, I have information. If you'd like to brand our van, that's helping us. Right now, we've got about $12,000 in the bank, and we're ready to start our new season of fundraising. Tomorrow is the last day of our flu season for the shots. Flu season ends in May. So we're going to start planning our fundraisers and having a lot of fun. And my first fundraiser is February 12th at Wine Styles. <laughs> and we're doing a gold buying event with Eric Houston, if you know him, if you've heard. Okay. We're going to be doing a gold buying event just to start raising more money outside of flu season. So I thank you all for your attention. This was the inspirational, hopefully, and educational look at our first year as a charity. Do you need me to hold your banner up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what, Michelle? Yeah. I want you to do something. Look at this.
Oh, that's what Bamberg. That's our logo. All right. Wow. Well, hold that up, and I want you to do a selfie with everybody behind you. Oh, that'd be fun. So everybody, get behind. Get over there. How do I do this? Help, this do this. help her out, Ronnie. Come over here. No. Do, back there. That's right. do it back there. Yeah. yeah. This is okay. this is the rest of it. Okay. Go back. Go back. And you guys, punch in here behind Michelle. Get behind Michelle here. Everybody, get right there. That's when I talk about that.